Hi friends, welcome to Happy Nursing. This is Ila and today we are going to discuss a theory given by Betty Newman called the Betty Newman's Nursing Theory. I hope my videos are useful to you and if it is then please like and share my videos and subscribe my channel. Betty Newman's Nursing Theory is based on the relationship between a person's stress and his response. See, we all have stress in our life. Some have stress due to study, some have stress due to job, some have stress of family life, some are stressed with financial problem. We all have our own stress and we all have our own way of responding to those stressors. Now the Newman's theory is talking about the relation between our stress and how we will react to it. Again she has said it focuses on how the patient responds to his actual or potential environmental stressors and maintenance of stability through primary, secondary and tertiary nursing interventions. What is actual stress and what is potential stress? All of you write nursing diagnosis. So all of you must be familiar with the pattern of diagnosis which begins with risk for or potential to. When we write nursing diagnosis straight away like fluid electrolyte imbalance or hypothermia. That means the patient is already suffering from fluid electrolyte imbalance or hypothermia. But when we write like risk for fluid imbalance or risk for dehydration or potential to injury, that means the problem has not yet occurred but the health condition or the environment is such that it may cause fluid imbalance, it may cause dehydration or it may cause injury. So the factors which may cause stress to us are called potential stressors and the factors which are already causing stress to us are called actual stressors. Newman system focuses on both of them. What else does it focus on? How do we maintain stability? How do we handle those stressors with the help of primary, secondary and tertiary nursing interventions? Betty Newman gave her famous model called the Newman systems model, the picture which you saw at the beginning. According to this model, the system here is an in open system in which there is a continuous flow of input, process, output and feedback. Like when we get any disease, that is the input. Whatever body mechanisms go on in our body, that is the process. Our reaction to that is the output. And lastly, the feedback. What happens as a result of my reaction? Am I cured or not? Obviously, it depends on how I react to it. This may look confusing to you. You need to know about all the concepts and sub-concepts of this theory in order to understand. Let's see the concepts one by one. First one is the basic structure. The system is like a boundary for us. Us means it may be a single client, it may be a group or even several groups. The client here consists of a basic or core structure that is protected by lines of resistance. Lines of resistance means which will protect us from the stressors. Now there are several lines around us or our core structure to protect us which are the defense lines. When stressors break through the defense line, the system is invaded and the lines of resistance are activated. Stressors can be of different types. Intrapersonal, which means within us. Interpersonal, which is created when we interact with others. And extrapersonal, which comes totally from others. The system is described as moving from a state of wellness to illness. Like we were fine, as soon as we are affected by a disease, it has crossed our line of defense. Now if we have adequate energy available, we can restore our defense line and get back our system again to the state of wellness. Right? If we get the proper treatment, we can again be cured. Now we have already talked about the basic or core structure. What is the basic we are talking about? Basic means the fundamental, the essential facts which are present in all human beings like the organ systems sense organs, process of elimination, etc. Another thing is energy. What is the energy? See, there should be a state of equilibrium in the basic structure, like the respiratory system. If someone is having respiratory distress, he cannot breathe, that is his stress at that point of time. So he is moving from wellness to illness. Now suppose he has an oxygen delivery unit at his bedside. What will happen? He will take the mask and use the oxygen, that is his energy his stressor will slowly go away. Now why does every other person not having this same kind of stress? Because they don't have the problem of respiratory distress. Oxygen available within their body is enough. That means their energy resource is enough. 
So whenever they suffer from breathing difficulty, like when it's very hot or it's very crowded, how do they handle that? With the oxygen available within their body. That is the energy available within their body. Now every basic structure has a set of variables for which their stressors differ from each other. First one is physiological variable which refers to the structure and functions of the body. For example, in the previous slide, we saw the patient was suffering from respiratory distress. That was his physiological problem which was causing him stress. That is a physiological variable. The psychological variable refers to mental processes and relationships. Some people have psychological diseases which cause them the stress or the stress may be due to any mental tension or any fight or any sadness caused from a loved one. These are psychological variables. Next comes the socio-cultural variable. The social system within which we live can cause stress to us. For example, a very well-known example would be the process of mediclaim in hospitals. You have often come around such situations when someone falls sick and you need to get the claim for that. There is a long procedure. You have to submit the papers, wait for approval, go to different counters, follow up the service person, uh, stand in a long queue. All this causes stress to us. But we don't have a choice. That is the system of our society. That is a part of our social structure. So that is a socio-cultural variable. Another variable is the developmental variable. It refers to those processes related to the development over lifespan. The development which takes place throughout our life. For example, do you remember the example I gave while explaining developmental self-care requisite? In the self-care deficit theory, promoting to a new job and going abroad is also one kind of development which is associated with a lot of adjustments, new role, new place, etc. That may cause several stress to a human being. Again, it may be physical. If someone is going through puberty, which is a developmental phenomenon, that may cause him stress. Lastly, the spiritual variable which refers to the influence of spiritual beliefs. For example, in a family, all the members are highly spiritual and they have a habit of taking shower before every major work of the daily routine. That may cause them to suffer from cold very frequently. Or maybe they have fasting habits which can cause health issues. So that is the spiritual variable of stress. Next, we will discuss about the line of defense. We have two kinds of defense lines, flexible line of defense and normal line of defense. What is flexible line of defense? As it's clear from the name, it is defending or resisting the stressors and protecting us. And this line is created by us. So it is flexible, means it can be changed uh, or more accurately, it can be stretched or compressed, broadened or narrowed whenever we want. For example, we all have some habits to fight the stress. Suppose I do yoga and meditation every morning and that helps me to be calm and handle all the problems throughout the day, keeping a cool mind. That is my flexible line of defense. Now I may have some involvement for a few days in between for which say I missed my yoga routine and then I cannot concentrate on my daily job anymore like before. The daily problems are disturbing me. That means my flexible line of defense is invaded. Next is normal line of defense. It is an adaptational level which is developed over time and is considered normal for a client. There are certain defense systems which are normal for our body. One which we have developed within ourselves over time and that initially protects us from different stressors. For example, some people have a habit of quietly taking in the hateful things people say about them. Others don't have it because it differs from person to person, right? We have often seen that friend who becomes very aggressive or very sad hearing others talking ill about her. And we have also seen that friend in our life who always takes it easy. The talking behind his back thing doesn't bother him. They be like, it's okay, let them say, I don't mind type. This is their normal line of defense. They have developed it within themselves over time. And it's not the same for everyone. Uh, it's also called a standard for wellness deviance determination. Means when the system gets disturbed, even with the slightest thing, which was considered to be normal till today, then we have to understand that the normal line of defense is invaded. And that means our state of wellness has shifted to illness. For example, the person who didn't used to mind others talking behind her back has suddenly started getting affected by that. That means she is having some so psychological problem which needs attention. Next is lines of resistance. 
these are either developed over time nor any additional resistance uh, these are the protective body mechanisms which we already have within us these are automatically activated when the normal line of defense which we just discussed is invaded for example when we remain in starvation our ketone body increases to compensate the carbohydrate scarcity or an easy example for you will be when we feel cold we shiver and this shivering is our body mechanism which helps us to regulate and control the temperature or when we get an infection our wbc increases so these are our lines of resistance so uh, so far we have discussed the concepts of newman systems model the system consists of a few concepts like the basic structure which is protected by the lines of resistance they are the protective body mechanisms which we already have within us outside that we have two types of defense lines normal line of defense and flexible line of defense normal line of defense is the one which we have developed within ourselves over time to protect us from stressors flexible line of defense is created by us and can be stretched or compressed broadened or narrowed as per our wish when stressors invade the flexible line of defense our normal line of defense gets activated i used to do yoga which got missed so my normal system of coping with stress has been activated like diverting myself then when the normal line of defense gets invaded my lines of resistance gets activated that means when diversional activities are not working my body mechanisms gets affected like i cannot sleep my serotonin levels rise or i become depressed my serotonin levels lower now if we have the proper energy that is if the regulatory body mechanism work then we can restore our health from illness to wellness otherwise we will need energy resource from outside like treatment counseling etc so i think this much is a lot to take in for today we will discuss the sub concepts in our next video for those who find my videos useful please like and share them and subscribe my channel